Welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. It's good to be back again. Doing these videos once a week is a good start for me getting back into the groove of things. And each week I'm trying to build a little bit more on the topics from the previous week. Right now we're going to take a look at 3.7, which is live. It went live last week. We have quite a lot to go over. First off, I'm going to talk about just getting your first couple of things done inside of the new PU. Now, let me just say this. I found myself over here at Grimex because I took out the Mantis. The Mantis is pretty amazing, but I needed to find a place to call home for somebody that was more nefarious because if you set off your Mantis's stasis field, you're going to incur a crime stat hit to your character, which means you're then going to have to go and buy one of those cracking tools and then head on over to Korea and hack the machine over there and remove your crime status or just die, one of the two. But I did that before I started this video and had quite a fun time doing it. I actually thought that I might still be in the process of, yeah, let's just say I thought I was recording the whole time. Regardless, we're going to go into the PU right now and we're going to find our way into the Mantis and try to get to some place that we can call home, some place away from Grimhex. I don't like the smell here. I don't like the way things are situated here. We just need to move on. With each release of the PU, we get a brand new ship or two or three or four or five that we can fly. In this one, we have a couple of new ships that haven't been in the game before. And then we have two variants that were released, or I should say second passes were given to them. I'm very happy with the ships that are in the game right now. And I'm kind of happy with this ship, the RSI Mantis. Now, when I looked at Cloud Imperium Games' website, when I looked at the Pledge Store, when I watched the videos that CIG was producing about the ship, I kind of thought it was going to be something different. This ship is kind of very niche, and it really needs to be escorted. The Mantis does provide quite a unique talent that no other ship has provided before in Star Citizen, and it's the ability to pull ships right out of quantum, right in front of you. Now, I don't know how it's really going to work, what the play of this ship is going to be like when things go live. Right now, I feel like I'm flying a mini constellation, and I don't know how much I like this ship. It is really fast and if they had races for larger ships this would be one of the ships that you would want to have it has incredible acceleration which i would have to say is one of its biggest defensive traits when you want to get out of a situation a bad situation all you have to do is punch it, hit your afterburner, and you are at top speed in a blink of an eye. Now, there must be some kind of inertia dampeners on here, or it may just be something that's going to be corrected in the future. Now, that being said, if you do get into any kind of fights, what I've been finding inside of version 3.7, and also I found this in 3.6, gimbaled weapons are king, stationary weapons stink so it's always good for me to go down a size and weapons so i can fit a gimbal because i feel that i'm going to be better able to get the weapons on target now i used to think that was the case in elite dangerous and then i learned how to fight and i learned how to get my weapons on target I don't know what's going to happen as I continue to play Star Citizen. At this particular point, one of the best ships that you can take out into a fight is something like a Freelancer MIS or anything with a Gatling gun. I have done exceptionally well in my 
Arrow, which has twin Gatling guns that are amazing on their gimbals. But this ship has beautiful lines. This ship has a silhouette unlike any other. But its interior looks a lot like some of the other ships that CIG's been putting out lately. Not well thought out and just put a bathroom here, put a bed there, put a kitchenette there, and we're done. I, I feel that the team at CIG is giving themselves too many ships to make, which is rushing the design of some of these, which is taking away from the immersiveness of the game, the fidelity of the game that Chris Roberts wanted for so long. The outsides of the ship are great. They fly well and things work. But from the time I stepped into the 600i, it, it's like something changed. There was always something wrong about ships like the Retaliator, ships like the Constellation. And, you know, each ship just doesn't feel like things are where they're supposed to be. And in this, this design, I kind of feel that CIG missed the mark on the piece of the ship that we're going to see most often, the inside. But the exterior of the ship gives me a totally different feeling. I love this sharp lines, this very Robert Space Industry look to this ship. Looking like a cross between a constellation and absolutely a mantis right out of the ocean, this is one of the prettiest ships that I own. I just don't know how I'm ever going to use it. I am going to have to put a posse together and possibly use it with, say, a raven or a warlock and a couple of gladiuses. I'm not sure. But I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to keep it possibly as some hanger candy. I attempted to use this today and use it to pick up boxes and deliver them from one place to another. You know, the boring things that we do currently in the game. And I have to say, I do like doing it. I love flying around the Stanton system and I do not have a problem picking up boxes and delivering them because at six to 10,000 a run, I make a lot of money doing it. And I really love the graphics in this game and the travel time gives me time to get a cup of tea to make myself a bagel to have a conversation with my daughter on the phone and I'm not very upset about that and I know that's strange but that's what I've done in the game so far so as far as my opinion goes I give the Mantis three stars out of five it's got a great look to it. The interior is not so well done for me. It doesn't have a lot of other roles I feel it's going to be good in. And I forgot to record my run through inside of the arena commander with it. it. It really is a glass cannon. So as far as I'm concerned, hanger candy, yes. Useful. We'll have to wait and see. A game crash and getting lost in our corp, we find ourselves going on to the second ship that I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to talk about it in a very kind and gentle way. And it's not a kind and gentle ship at all. It's going to be the Vanguard Harbinger. It's again a ship that really isn't needed yet because we don't have that gameplay at least I thought we didn't have that gameplay you're gonna see what I mean but we don't have that gameplay where we have missions to go take out larger ships and the Harbinger is a bomber it's made to take out those medium-sized ships maybe something as big as a well possibly a squadron of them could take out something like a Polaris but I really do love this ship and let's get on and walk out of our elevator and take a look at it every time i walk up to the vanguard i just i don't know what it is i don't own one right now but i know i'm going to i just feel that it's a very well done design i remember sitting next to the the designer of the ship 
over in CIG when I visited Cloud Imperium Games a couple years ago. I remember him showing me the design and I immediately pulled out or pulled up a picture of the P, I think it's the P61 Black Widow. And I think he nailed it. I think he nailed this design. This is totally opposite of what I felt about the Mantis. The interior of the ship is exceedingly well done. And that's because it's more of a military vehicle and you have something to go off of. I think when Cloud Imperium games are making these military vehicles, they do get it right. It's when they start thinking about luxury and they start thinking about these niche ships, I feel that they get a little lost as to what they do on the inside. Well, one military ship I have to say that they did botch the interior on is the Valkyrie. Now, some people love the Valkyrie, but I just look at it that the crew compartment, the ones that they sleep in, should be totally separated from the rest of the ship. Kind of like this is. This is an amazing design. You have now, at this point, you have a dropship, you have a bomber, you have a long-range fighter, and I believe the Sentinel is, isn't that the electronic warfare ship? The vanguards are just incredible, they're beautiful, and they pack a punch. So it's time for us to stop looking at the wire frames of this ship and to get it into the air. And the first thing that we have to do is we have to find a way to call Area 18's landing services. Now here's one of the things I didn't like about that. I had no way to see that this was open until I went to the outside view. Once I do get this baby in the air, it's all business. Raise the landing gear and punch it. And that's exactly what we do here. The silhouette of this spacecraft with that huge gun under its nose just makes you think of something akin to a B-25 Mitchell, only that gun would have been inside of the ship, not outside. And I frequently say that about these designs. Put those guns that you're attaching to a tiny little turret, put them in something that's more akin to an enclosure to make it look more part of the ship. I know I get a little nitpicky at times, so we're going to move on from here and move on to something that really did shock me. With Star Citizen's introduction of the Mantis in this patch, I find that we are getting interdicted quite often. and. I was just running boxes. I was running boxes in the Mantis, and this was a box run in the Vanguard. I had been stopped so many times and ran away when I was in the Mantis. Finally, inside of the Vanguard, I said, you know what? I just have to go all in and take out the ships that I can. Now, most of the time that I do this, I found that there was either so much lag or such erratic... AI that most of the time I would be winding up dead because an AI would just decide that I was something for them to crash into. The AI seems to be better. Better at trying to fight you, trying to get on your six, and also better at keeping their guns on you when you're trying to be on their six. And what this means is that they're making full use of their G limiter and use of decouple mode. And that means that you need a pretty tough ship to take on some of these enemies. And there's almost always going to be something bigger. So in this situation, we have three ships that are attacking us. One of them is really just there to keep us in place. And that's going to be the caterpillar that they use as their interdiction ship. And then they have a constellation, Andromeda, and a buccaneer. Now, this ship was built specifically to take out things like the Andromeda. The missiles that we have on us right now are pretty capable, but not really against something like that currently. But the cannons that we have are amazing. The guns that are in the nose of this that make it look like a P-38 Lightning or something like a B-25 Mitchell, the one that had the big 105 in it, this or 75 millimeter cannon this 
is just an amazing ship and I have a great time taking some of these ships out. I have to say this. In the beginning, when we first started getting combat in the PU, not in Arena Commander, but in the PU, it was so erratic and so laggy and so blah that I really didn't enjoy taking part in it. But this is the third encounter that I had in the Vanguard on this one mission. I was stopped so many times. I think I shot down somewhere between six and eight ships including the first time I've ever been able to blow up a Caterpillar, which was pretty amazing. Now, the gimbal assist on these weapons is pretty good, but I, I'm really impressed with the AI and how well that they're able to use all of the tools that are given to them in the game at this point. It actually does make combat in the game somewhat more fun and that was my biggest surprise today because I really haven't been having fun in the PU until recently and now that I have a challenge when I'm going after some of these pirates that are gonna pull me out of my quantum jump I, I'm finding that it's a much better game to play I think Cloud Imperium Games is on the way to making Star Citizen something that more and more people are going to begin to like and then love. Yes, it's got a far way to go. And yes, there are still some things that are utterly so broken that they can ruin your day. But I think Star Citizen is moving in a different direction now. I think it's starting to explode. No, it's starting to make a move to something that's much more fun something that's becoming much more of a realization of the vision that chris roberts had when he thought about star citizen and i know there's so many people out there so many that have problems with the development of the game and i'm not going to try to change your mind because it took me a while to come back to it and to know I just had to have patience. And I'm beginning to really like being in the game again. There are times that I get frustrated and I know I'm going to leave this one on a bad note. Just wait for it because there is something that happened in this playthrough that ruined my day. But it didn't ruin my day in a way where I lost everything. I had fun. I spent a couple of hours in the game playing and I was able to do things like this, just utterly destroy the Caterpillar. I'm very impressed with this ship, with the Vanguard. I'm very impressed with the exterior of the Mantis. And I'm liking how smooth things are going in this game. I'm liking that when you go into Quantum, you're not having that, that lag, that slowdown anymore. And I feel like the folks over at Cloud Imperium Games are starting to really get a hang of making this game better for all of us. This was going to be my fourth box run for the play session that I had today. I was having fun. I was beginning to have the utmost confidence in the game. I'd had a couple of crashes, but it turned out they weren't because of the game, but they were because AT&T was working on lines in my neighborhood. So I got kicked out of the game because we lost internet. But it didn't stop me from cursing CIG at that moment until I found that my router needed to be rebooted yet again to get back on the network. But there are still things in the game that make me frustrating. And I'm going to let it end on one of them. And it's going to be the bugs that continue to plague Star Citizen. And those bugs could be the going into T-pose when you jump. It could be stepping off the wrong stair and falling through the world. It could be, well, it could be quite a number of different things. There are still long-lasting bugs in the game that I feel need to be fixed before I can tell the masses of people that are trusting me to come back into the game and play full-time. I think you should still meter your playtime in Star Citizen and take everything with a grain of salt. They're getting better, things are starting to look brighter, and I feel that 
the folks over at Cloud Imperium Games are making a much better try at this game. But sometimes you just have one mistake that you make, like dropping a box and winding up falling through the world. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button below. And if you do subscribe, remember to click on that notification icon to be notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon.